In this video, we're going to talk about the peripheral nervous system and then the senses. And the sense we'll start with is the eye, your vision. Uh, just remember, peripheral nervous system is the motor neurons that are sending signals out and then the sensory neurons that are receiving stimuli and sending that into your brain. So we're going to look at, uh, right now, hierarchy or the organization of the peripheral nervous system. So you can see the first major division is sensory input, which is going to be sending information in, receiving stimuli, and then the motor or efferent division, which is going to be responding, sending signals to your muscles or other parts of your body. Um, so if we look at the sensory, there's two, two divisions of that. There's sensing internal, I'm sorry, external environment, so things outside, you're hot, you're cold, it's noisy, uh, you're looking at something, uh, and then internal environment, okay? So I'm really hungry, I have low blood sugar, um, or maybe my blood pressure is too low, I need to increase my heart rate and, and constrict, constrict arteries. So that's all internal and external environment of the sensory. In terms of your motor or output neurons, there's two main parts. The somatic, somatic means body, but this really is connected to your muscles. This, this is the part of your nervous system that you're consciously aware of. So you're sending signals to your muscles to move your muscles to sit up. Uh, the autonomic nervous system, this is the involuntary nerves. You're not consciously thinking of these, but the lower part of your brain is communicating to your heart and to your lungs and to your stomach and to different parts of your body. Now among that autonomic nervous system, there are two main divisions, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. So let's look at those for a second. So parasympathetic division is involved in stimulating salivary glands, so I'm getting saliva going, slowing my heart rate, relaxing my breathing, slowing down my breathing, stimulating uh, blood flow to my stomach and intestines, activities that are associated with rest and digest, right? Uh, the sympathetic division is the opposite of that. This is the part of your body, if you're excited, if you're scared, what's gonna happen, okay? Your pupils are gonna um, dilate. Your salivary glands will be inhibited. Uh, your lungs will increase respiration and increase um, size to get more oxygen in. Your heart rate will increase. You won't send um, blood to your stomach. Uh, you also won't produce a lot of saliva, getting dry mouth. If you're really nervous or scared, you might get a dry mouth. You're not producing saliva, you're not in that digest mode, right? Um, so basically we can sum these up. The uh, way I like to remember them is sympathetic uh, system. You feel sympathy or sympathetic for someone that's in the sympathetic system, right? Or why? Because it's fight or flight. They're getting ready to fight or they're getting ready to run away from something so they don't get killed. You're being chased by a bear or something. These are the processes that are involved in the sympathetic. The parasympathetic is the rest digest, right? So you're focusing on resting and digesting food and everything is good. So again, the two main types of the um, autonomic um, nervous system are parasympathetic and sympathetic. So let's talk about the senses. So senses are, again, part of that peripheral system that's receiving stimulus and sending it into the brain. So we have example of photoreceptors here. These are receiving visual stimuli in your eye, in the back of your eye. Uh, we also have in the skin sensory neurons that are sensing things like pain, hot, cold, uh, touch, and so forth. So different types of sensory neurons. Today we're gonna focus on the senses in the eye and how your eye receives visual stimulation and sends that to your brain. So uh, if we look at the parts of the eye, uh, the important parts of the eye that you need to know about are those photoreceptors that are actually receiving the stimulus are on this yellow part on the back of the eye right back here and they're actually receiving the light through the lens um, and that those photoreceptors are called uh, are found on the retina. So the retina is the back of the eye that has the photoreceptors. Okay? Um, those photoreceptors then send uh, signals or synapses out here to the nerve, what's called the optic nerve, which then sends those signals to your brain, to the occipital lobe of your brain. So the opt optic nerve is connected to the retina. And then a part of 
your retina is, is blocked, okay? This is where the optic nerve is coming in and blood arteries are going in, so you don't have any photoreceptors there. And you can't see anything in this part of the retina. That's called your blind spot. We'll just call it blind spot. Optic disc is another term for that, okay? Your eye is full of this clear liquid. Sometimes if you look at a wall, you can see like things floating by. Those are dead cells in there, but the, Mostly, it's, it's a clear liquid in there that allows light to travel to your retina, and that's called the vitreous humor. Uh, vitreous humor, the clear liquid in the eye. Then up in the front is an important structure. This helps focus light back here onto your retina. So it depending on if you're looking at something close up or far away, just like a camera has a lens to focus, your eye has a lens to focus. And then in front of that lens, there is a structure called the iris. This, mine are blue, yours might be green or brown. Uh, it's that colored part of your eye that when you say what colors your eye, you're talking about just that pigment on your iris right there. And what the iris does is it can contract or expand and it can regulate the amount of light that's getting into your eye. So when you turn the lights off, it will dilate, let more light in. If you turn the lights on, it's really bright, you're out on a sunny day, it will constrict and reduce the amount of light so that you're not overexposing the retina back here, okay? And then outside of that is the cornea, so the, the outer sort of protective covering of your eye is called the cornea. And then the part of your eye that allows light to pass in is called the pupil. So this is that black area that will get bigger or smaller depending on whether it's light or dark and you're the contracting of your iris. So those are the parts of your eye. So fill in the chart, you should have a diagram that you filled in some of those important parts because you'll need to know those on your next test. So how does the lens focus? Well, you've got these muscles up here called ciliary muscles and when they contract, they pull down, sort of contract and pull the lens to make it thicker. And when it's thicker like that, it allows light to be focused that's close up. So if you're reading something close to you, you have to constrict these muscles which cause a thicker lens to focus. If you're like me and you're farsighted, I've got to grab my glasses and put them on to read something. You see me do this all the time because these muscles are no longer working. As you get older, these muscles start to not work and you can't focus on things that are close up and you need to get reading glasses. You will if you don't have them yet. By the time you're my age, you probably will. Anyway, if you are nearsighted, that means you can't focus on faraway objects. And what that means is these muscles can't quite relax enough to let your uh, lens flatten out so that you can focus on objects in the distance. So when you go to get your driver's license, you have to do an eye exam. You have to look at things at a distance and be able to focus on them. Uh, what happens is your eyes have to be able to, again, relax these muscles to flatten out the lens such that it will allow objects at a distance to stay focused, okay? And if you wear glasses, you're probably well familiar with you know, being nearsighted or farsighted, but this is why you can't focus on either close up or far away objects. So the photoreceptors on your retina that allow you to see light are either called rods, you may remember that from when we talked about color blindness, or cones. Cones, remember, are the ones that allow you to see color. So if you're red-green color blindness, you're missing some of the cones that allow differentiate between red and green color. Um, rods, these are the ones that just allow light or no light. So um, dogs, cats, animals that are colorblind sacrifice some cones for more rods, and that allows them to see in very, very dim light. Since we are primates and we eat a lot of fruit, we need to know when that fruit is ripe, so we sacrifice some night vision, since we're not nocturnal, usually, um, to see color, so we can determine when that fruit is ripest and full of sugars, okay? So how do these um, photoreceptors work? Well, in these little discs, uh, there's a protein called rhodopsin, and rhodopsin responds to light. It physically changes, and when it does, that signals an action potential, 
and they basically fire, release a neurotransmitter, much like the nerves do in our nervous system, and then they get hooked up. So here's the rods and the cones. They get hooked up to these neurons, which then are connected to the optic nerve, which then goes to our occipital lobe. So basically, stimulus is received in our retina, rods and cones receive and send that information that goes to our brain. Our brain then figures out what that image is, interprets that, that uh, visual association area allows us to figure out what we're looking at. So this is an introduction to the eye. In the next video, we'll go over the other senses that are associated with sensory perception. But that's it for today.